I've got something for you. Do you want to know how to write your first Discord bot using Golang? Then you came to the right place. Stay tuned. Hello and welcome to my new video. I'm going to write myself a friend. Well, a Discord bot, which is actually quite the same. I got this idea at work where we have this counting bot. This sounds boring at first, but it's actually quite fun. Um, you see somebody else type in a number and then you have to increase it by one, which which leads to a race where everybody's typing the number very fast and, um, well, somebody always fucks up. Oh, can you even say that? Somebody fat fingers the wrong number and, um, yeah, you, you get the idea. So then you have to start all over again. So I decided to write myself something similar. I call it... What it does is very simple. It lets you challenge other people and accept challenges by other people. After that, you will get into an epic battle and the winner is determined by pure luck. So you never know who will win. There will also be a leaderboard ranking each user in terms of total wins, so you can always see who is the best fighter. This video will have two parts. In the first one, I'm going to write the game engine and in the second part, I'm actually writing the Discord bot. I've never done this, so I'm really looking forward to do so. Now that we know what to do, let's get coding. First, I define the fighter. The username is used to make the connection between the fighter and the Discord user later on. It also has a health value. This is the amount of health that one fighter needs to chunk down before the other fighter dies. I set it to a default of 100 HP, just because I felt like 100 seems like a good number. You can ignore the strength value for now. I wanted to have a base damage and some sort of luck based bonus damage or so. But then I realized that the base damage is already a random number. So I decided to leave the bonus damage out and forgot to remove the strength value before recording. As you can see, the attack is basically a random number between 1 and 20. If a fighter attacks the other fighter, the damage value will be randomly generated in a specific range. I also wanted to see if the damage is actually random, so I created the fighter in the main file and let him attack 5 times. Only to find out that the damage isn't random after all. But after a quick search I found that the solution is very simple. I just forgot to give the random number generator initial seed. After setting it, BAM! Random damage. Now we need a way to evade an attack. So if one fighter attacks, there needs to be a chance that the other fighter does not get hit. Let's get these fighters evasive ninja style. I added an evade function which is basically the same as the attack function. Later on I will call the attack function of fighter 1 and the evade function of fighter 2 and see which one is the higher number. The higher number will determine if the attack was successful or not. I also added a deal damage function and a is dead function. These are pretty self-explanatory. To test my code I added two fighters in the main function. I let fighter 1 attack and fighter 2 evade. After running the code a few times, you can see that the values are random and the damage was never high enough to let one fighter take lethal damage. So the fighting functionality seems to work. Now we need to stitch it all together and let these fighters have an epic battle and see which one is going to be victorious and which one is going down in shame. The fight code is pretty straightforward. I let fighter A attack and fighter B evade. Then they switch turns and fighter B attacks while fighter A evades. After that I check if one of them is down and return who has won and who has lost. After running the code a few times you can see that player 2 definitely has the upper hand. Finally time for the fun part. I am starting with a fresh discord account with exactly zero friends. So let's change that and create a bot. Like that would even help with my zero friend problem. But anyway. If you want to create a bot too, just follow these simple steps. Since the bot needs to live somewhere, the first thing we need to do is to create a server. Simply go to the add server button, then select create my account, for me and my friends. Discord is even kind enough to suggest a name for our server. Click on create and uh, click this away. As you can see, we are now connected to our new server, which has a general text channel and a general voice channel. Nothing fancy, but it gets the job done. Now let's create our bot. To do so, you first have to create an application. You can do this by going to this URL, discord.com slash developer slash applications. There you can see all the applications that you created. Just make sure to be logged in in the web browser with your Discord account. There you can press new application and enter a name. Since this is a testbot, I'm going to name it Golang Testbot. 
hit create and there you go. You have created your first Discord application. Now it's time to create the bot. You can now create the bot by clicking on the bot tab. Then add bot and yes do it. Congratulations, you created your bot. To actually talk to your bot in your code you need two more things. First you need the token. This can be retrieved by clicking copy here. Make sure to store this token in your code. You need it to be able to talk to it. After that you need to set permissions for your bot. Just go to OAuth2, under scopes select bot and under bot permissions select the ones that are relevant for you. Since I'm just testing out I think send messages will be a good start for me. Now to actually invite your bot to your server go to the link up here and open it in a new tab. Then select the server you want to add your bot and then press continue. It will show a summary of the selected permissions. So this looks good. Press authorize to add your bot to your server. Yes, I'm human. There you go. You added your bot to your server. So if you go back to your Discord client, you see that the bot appeared and it is offline. So we are good to go. To actually talk to my bot, I'm going to use this library. If we scroll down a bit, we can see in this usage section that the client creation is very straightforward. We simply need to pass the auth token and we are good to go. So let's give it a try. I just browsed the examples folder and found a very simple ping pong example. This shows how to connect to the bot as well as how to send messages from the server to the bot. This is exactly what I'm looking for. On the left side of the screen, you can see that I've already downloaded the library and the auth token from my bot. I'm ready to start now and let's code this bad boy and see how it works. Okay, I'm done now, so let's give it a try. The server is running, now let's go back to the Discord client and hope that the bot answers. Yes, it does, very nice. Let's go through the code a bit. The first few lines are simply the client creation using the token we got during the bot creation process. This gives us an instance called DG, which we can use to talk to our bot. Next, we add an event handler. This is the part that listens to what we type in the chat box and responds accordingly. This is the function we will later fill with all our fancy schmancy commands. This line is needed for the initial handshake with the Discord server. To identify yourself you need to send some intents. There are a lot of different intenses but to be honest I haven't quite looked into this yet so I just copy pasted it from the example. After that the connection is established and we close as soon as we get any kind of termination signal. Now it's time to actually implement the commands for our bot. If you have a look at the comments, you can see that I've prepared a list of the commands that the bot will listen to. So for instance, if you type in exclamation mark challenge bot, the bot will listen to this command and respond with a fight. Each command will have a specific response. First there will be the exclamation mark challenge bot command. The next commands will be the challenge and the accept commands. These are needed if you want to challenge other users and accept their challenges. To see your open challenges from other users, you can use the challenges command. This will show a list of all your open challenges. And of course, we all want to know who is the king of the hill. If you are typing exclamation mark leaderboard, the bot will respond with the leaderboard. Who would have guessed? Last but not least, I will provide a help command. This will also be the default if someone types in some random command that the bot does not know. So you get immediate response on how the bot works. So let the fun begin. I just finished the first command. So now let's see if it works. Darn, he won. But nevertheless, the code works. This is good. Let's go over the challenges code. I have a challenges struct containing a map of all open challenges for each user. Of course, I also have a new challenges function which will create a new instance of challenges. The add challenges function does exactly what it says. It takes two users and adds a challenge for both users respectively. The remove challengers function is needed to remove the challenge from the open challenges map after a fight has taken place. Then there is a helper function which checks if a challenge exists. At the end I have a function showing all open challenges for a user. If no challenges exist, I return an empty slice. In the discord go file you can see that I implemented the first few commands. After figuring out I have no one else to test the challenges with, I added a dummy challenge. At the top of the connect to discord function you can see that I added a challenge between me and the random guy. This is so I can test the challenges and accept commands. Now let's finally see it in action. Ok, let's start the server and type in exclamation mark challenges. Ok, as we can see I have an open challenge from random guy. Let's accept it and ok, I won, nice. 
Now that the challenges part is working, the leaderboard is the next part. Let's get back to work. Let's quickly go over the statistics code that I used for the leaderboard command. First I introduce the statistics struct, which will contain all the wins and losses for each user. Then there is a statistics struct. This is used as a return type for the getStatistics function I will show in a second. And as always, a new statistics function to create a new instance. Same old, same old. The first function is the addStatistic function. This increments the wins and losses for the winner and the loser by one respectively. The getStatistics function iterates over the wins and losses maps and fills a helper map, the stats map, with the statistics struct I was talking about. Then I strip the keys from the map and sort the slice by total wins. In the Discord Go file I added the statistic instance as a global variable. The only thing left to do was to add a statistic after each fight. This needed to be done here and here. Now it's time to get some action. I guess you already saw on the right side that the leaderboard command is working, but I wanted to show you how it looks like with an empty leaderboard. Let's type in exclamation mark leaderboard and as you can see it's empty. But if we accept the challenge from random guy and type in the leaderboard command again, we see that he is actually the first place after beating me. Now the last thing we need to do is to implement the help command and set it as a default response. The code for the help command is pretty much just a concatenation of strings explaining each command. Let's start the server and see if the help command works. Exclamation mark help show the help. Okay. Exclamation mark leaderboard still shows an empty board. Good. And if I type in a random string, I get a help response as the default. Perfect. This video was a real pleasure for me. I always wanted to write the Discord board and I finally got the chance to do it. And it was quite fun. If you want to see more of this Discord bot or the battle bot, please let me know in the comments down below. Then I will make it publicly available for everybody so you can use it at work. Thank you all for watching. If you like this video, smash the like button, subscribe to the channel, ring the bell, give me some love. And until next time, keep on coding.